Hey Internet, it's your old friend Dominic here with the All American Casino Guide, a channel dedicated to providing you all the tips, tricks, tutorials, and trivia that you're ever going to need to know about casinos and casino games. Make sure to check out all the videos on our channel. We have a curated collection of interesting videos on all topics that you could find useful. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel because it's the only way to guarantee that you won't miss a thing. Guys, today we're going to be talking about a beginner's guide to betting and raising. This is for people who are maybe just getting into poker and they don't yet fully understand what these terms mean. We're going to try to dissect them and explain what they are and how you use them as part of your betting strategy. Within any individual round of betting within the game of Texas Hold'em, there is one of five actions you can take. And those actions in no particular order are to fold, bet, check, call, or raise. Today we're going to be focusing on betting and raising specifically. We're going to be talking about what those are and how you use them effectively as part of your strategy. A bet within the game of Texas Hold'em is a term given to any amount of money a player wants to add to the pot as a mandatory amount to continue playing. This happens when no one has yet made a bet and you are the first to place it. So typically after a flop, turn, or river card is dealt, you are given the first option to in fact determine what the stakes are going to be initially. Inversely, a raise is an action you can take when a bet is not sufficiently large enough. For example, if one player has bet $50 and you in fact want to play for $100, you can raise their bet to $100, adding an additional $50 on top of their bet. The player who made the initial bet of $50 will have to decide if they want to either fold their hand, meaning provide no additional money and take themselves out of the play of the hand, or they'll have to add additional money to match your bet because your raise has become the new bet standard. It's important to know that irrelevant of if you're making a bet or a raise, that your first action at any table stands as the action that will take place. I'll explain what I mean by that. So for example, if you say, I want to raise 100 and you only push $50 of chips forward, the dealer is then going to remind you that you just declared a $100 bet and will require you to put the other $50 in, even if you did not originally mean to actually want to bet that much. Your first action is the binding action. Inversely, if you push 50 chips forward and say, I call when the bet was only 20, you're now forced to go for a raise because you have pushed in that extra $30 in chips. So remember that whatever you say or do is the binding action. So make sure before you say or do anything, that you know exactly what it is that you're trying to convey. Is your action a raise or simply a call? Now I'm going to talk for a second about why it is that you want to bet or raise in the first place. A bet initially is to simply increase the pot size. That is the primary reason. But you should only be placing a bet if you in fact believe you have a strong hand or you are trying to convey that you have a strong hand and you wish to essentially bluff the table into thinking that you have something when in reality you don't. When you make a bet, you want to make sure that it conveys the right tone. Sometimes it can simply be a feeler bet where you're just putting some chips out there to see if other people are as confident of the strength of their hand as you are in your own. You also might be making a push out bet where you are putting so much money in that you're in fact trying to push other players out by scaring them. They might think that they don't have a very strong hand. Uh, they may have been portraying that they had a strong hand, but now that you've pushed so many chips forward, they are second guessing that and deciding to get out before it costs them too much money. Inversely, a raise is something you do when another player has already made a declarative statement on the strength of their hand by placing a bet but you think that your hand is even stronger than, that, than theirs, and in fact you want to add additional money and challenge the statement that they've made previously with their bet. So if a player says, I think my hand is worth 50 extra dollars, 
and you think your hand is actually worth a hundred extra dollars, you would go ahead and push in with a $50 raise. It's important to understand within the game of Texas Hold'em that a huge component of the game itself is in betting and how you play those bets. Most poker hands don't actually go down to a showdown. Uh, if you watch enough World Series of Poker, you're gonna see a very small fraction of hands actually go down to two players showing their hands. But what's important to also note is that a minimum bet is typically the large or the big blind minimum. So for example, if the big blind currently is at $10, then that means that the minimum bet that a player can make is $10. It's important to also know if the table you're playing at is a no limits table or has a pot limit. The last thing I would like to talk about within the game of Texas Hold'em and in respect to betting and raising is the all-in bet. So depending on if you're playing at a table that allows for no limits, then you might be able to make what's called an all-in bet, where you literally bet all the chips you have left. Now, the players that have to respond to your bet have to either match your bet with the chips they have or put in all the chips they have if that happens to be less than what you're betting. So for example, if you push in 400 in chips and they only have 350, they're gonna cover you for 350 with $50 going into an overpot uh, with any other players adding to that if they can. We'll explain overpots later in another video. One piece of advice I'd like to give is that if you start raising pre-flop, uh, then you need to continue with that strategy. Uh, if you start changing your betting strategy mid-hand, uh, you're starting to give away information about your hand that could be damning to your ability to win the hand overall. Uh, it could cost you a lot of money in the end run, and it also could end up pushing players into the hand when in fact you're trying to push them out. Essentially, don't hesitate. Pick a strategy and stick with it. In respect to the size of any bet or raise, when it comes to post-flop betting, if you want to make a bet that is considered intimidating, you should make sure that your bet is at least 3x the last bet made. So for example, if a player has made an initial bet of $50, you are not going to intimidate that player by betting anything less than 150. So you wanna raise their bet substantially in order to get them out of the hand or even to reconsider the strength of their own. Anything less than 3x is just not gonna have the intimidation on it and players might feel that they're already chip committed and decide to play the hand anyway. Another point worth mentioning is the infamous check raise. Uh, if you are early to act in a round, it is not a bad idea to start off initially with checking, unless you are afraid that players inherently are after free cards that are gonna improve their hand overall. But it's typically in your favor to go for an early check if you are right off the button. Um, what you do with that is by checking, you will leave it up to the other players to decide on the initial bet. So if you check your action to the next player, they decide to make a bet, then you can raise their bet because you've already sucked them in for some chips. If you had just instead placed that initial bet of say $150, then you would have pushed that player out and you wouldn't have got their $50 bet that they would have made for the example I used previously. What's important to also note is that once you have made a strong statement to the table uh, of the strength of your hand based on you making strong pre-flop bets or raises, you should more or less stick with that strategy or get out of the hand. If you decide to go heavy with, uh, a, with a big bet or a big raise pre-flop and then subsequently after the flop, you're checking or you're just limping in uh, on other people's minimum bets, you're telegraphing to the rest of the table that you did not match up anything on your flop. Uh, essentially that your two hold cards are the strength of your hand and they might not be nearly as strong now as you felt they were at pre-flop. Remember, a hand isn't anything until the showdown. It's simply an escrapulation, an idea. So that concludes a very brief introduction to the basics of betting and raising. 
Make sure to check out the rest of the videos on our channel. We have a number of tutorials on other various betting strategies and techniques that may aid in betting not only in Texas Hold'em, but a variety of other games like Blackjack and Baccarat. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Slam that like button. Click and clack that subscribe button. So that way you won't miss any of the videos that we have coming in the near future. My name's Dominic. This has been the All-American Casino Guide reminding you, play responsibly.